Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we are going to be talking about one of the newest releases from Marc Jacobs. This is the iconic multi-finish eye palette in Terrific in the Very Merry Cherry Edition. With that being said, let's get into it. <laughs> Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. Basically, I am a product knowledge enthusiast. It brings me joy to know about what's new on the makeup market, and I like sharing that with you guys. So this weekend, Sephora had some sneak peek items for VIP Rouge members, where we got 24 hours to pick out a few selected early releases for the holidays, one of which was from the brand new Very Merry Cherry collection from Marc Jacobs, their holiday collection and literally the night before this launch happened I had actually posted on my Instagram how excited I was for this collection I thought the packaging was just adorable so this is just one piece in the whole collection the collection is actually set to come out October 28th online at Marc Jacobs Beauty and then October 16th online at Sephora so we did get very lucky that we had one piece come out early in the collection along with the eyeshadow palette it looks like there is also a highlighter, a mascara in limited edition packaging. You have some lip creams, lip oils, skincare. Wow, there's a lot of things. And then there's lots of like little packages of sample sizes in the cherry packaging. I don't know. I thought this collection was really cute. Based on your guys' initial reaction, some of you said it reminded you of the Norvina palette, which once you mentioned it, I was like, yes. Some of you said it looked very cheap and childish. And I will say this, Marc Jacobs is quite a luxe brand. And for the most part, I think they've only come out with really luxe, sophisticated packaging. And this is kind of not very sophisticated. Even my mom kind of looked at it. She said, it kind of looks cheap. But then, you know, she was like, but it is really, really cute. Personally, I like luxe and sophisticated, but I also like cute and adorable. So the packaging did get me for this. I am thinking about picking up some other things from the collection, but I am very happy to see that the palette came out because I'm an eyeshadow palette hoarder. Okay, so so let's take a closer look at this. So this was $49.50. Like I said, though it's not available now, it will definitely come back out again. It is a limited edition palette that features seven ultra pigmented cherry inspired shades. This has a 12 month shelf life and this one is made in the USA. So I'm not a big expert on the Marc Jacobs iconic eyeshadow palettes. I do have a couple in my collection, but I definitely don't collect them, but I do like picking up the ones that do have limited edition packaging. So I've, everything is very cherry-fied in this collection. So this is what the box looks like that it came in. It has these cute little cherries on it. And by the way, I specifically chose these earrings <laughs> for this palette review, you guys. I actually made these earrings. Actually, I think I, I made all of the jewelry that I'm wearing. If you followed me on Instagram, one of my hobbies over quarantine was making jewelry. And I told some of you guys I was gonna come out with an Etsy shop with some of the stuff that I made. I still am planning on that so you can guys can pick up a few of the pieces. I'm just waiting to get a little bit more into the swing of thing for teaching online because it's a lot and it's taking me a lot to get into that. So once I feel more comfortable with teaching and I have a little bit more time, then I will totally get on the Etsy shop. But for now, tell me what your favorite pieces are and what you want to see. Anyways, <laughs> self promo. So the packaging is the same component that it's always in, obviously just decorated differently. So you have this beautiful light minty green color, which I personally like with gold accents. And then you have one simple cute little cherry on the top. I love cherries. I think cherries are super cute. You have all of the colored names. Side note, I love how the names actually have the colors so you know what to call the shades. And when you open it up, you have your seven shades. Now, looking at this, I will say it's not a very original palette. You probably definitely can dupe all of these colors in your collection. For me, it's more so about the novelty of it. I love holiday makeup items. I love the packaging. I always set money aside every year to kind of go a little bit ham on the releases as opposed to during the normal year. So I knew I was definitely going to get this. So technically, Texture wise in here, I would say you're getting three true mattes. It's gonna be this shade, this shade, and this shade. 
Then you're getting one true metallic shade, which is right here. You're getting one satin shade, which is this shade right here. And then you have kind of like a glittery shade right here. And this shade is a little bit different. It's more of like a subtle lid topper. And this is the only shade that I'm disappointed in in this palette. Yeah, this shade I felt like was very lackluster. It just wasn't what I was expecting. The pigment on it is very weak. You'll see in my tutorial that I put a color underneath to put this one on top. I'm okay with a shadow not being extremely pigmented, but then the finish of it better be gorgeous. And I found the finish of this to be very subtle and just like meh. So for me, this is kind of not a very good shade, but the rest of them, amazing. <laughs> like you will see in my tutorial, I was so obsessed with it. I think the biggest surprise in this palette that I loved was this shade right here, Juicy. It is a satin shade. It just looks like a normal cream shade and when you swatch it, you're like, eh. But on the eye, it has the perfect sheen for an underbrow highlight. I definitely think this is a very versatile shade. And then this shade right here is the glitter shade that I have on my inner half of my eye and I am so obsessed with it. All of the mattes blended very nice. You do get a lot of fallout with the deeper shades, so just be aware of that. I would suggest doing your face makeup after your eyes. Particularly, I did notice a lot of fallout. I don't usually struggle with fallout because I tap the heck out of my brush. And even still, I had a little bit of a mess under here. I wouldn't say I really love this color story. I love the whole story of the palette, I suppose. But as far as colors I would wear a lot, I mean, probably not. <laughs> this one. I didn't need it. But if you really like the color story, I think it's really nice and I think it's very easy to create a look with the way that this palette is laid out. I think it's very user friendly. So if you like these colors, I like all of the dimension that you get in here and I just feel like it's very easy to create a look with this. That being said, speaking of creating looks, I'm gonna get into my tutorial for you guys so that you can see how I created this look. So the first shade we're going into is Juicy. I'm using an Esam S33. And this shade is the perfect underbrow highlighter. It has such a gorgeous soft sheen to it and it actually can be built up to be quite white and pigmented but that's why I'm using a blending brush to apply it. I love this color. With an Esam 34 I'm taking the shade Delicious. So this is going to be my inner corner crease color. So just in the beginning half and then whatever's left over on my brush I'm gonna blend all the way out but this is going to be our base color. Gosh these shadows just apply so beautifully. You can't tell I'm liking everything so far. With the BK Beauty 202, I'm taking the shade Extra. Now be very, very careful with this shade. It does give you a lot of fallout, so make sure you pat your brush out. It's very, very pigmented, but it can be a bit messy. Even though I tap my brush off well, I still am getting a little bit of fallout. So this has a lot. A fallout uh, so you need to use it accordingly maybe apply it before you do your face makeup but I like to live on the edge that way so it's fine and then I'm kind of creating a little bit of a winged out shape and I'm applying a little bit at a time and then building just to keep the look pretty mess free with the morphe and 507 I'm also running that shade down the lower lash line next we're going into the shade on top this looks a little bit more brown based but I would say it actually actually is the perfect depth color in this palette because it has a plum element to it also. So I'm just applying it on the outer part of my lower lash line and then whatever's left over we're going to work inwards and then also apply some up here. Just like that. I'm taking some of the extra shade again and I'm actually just going to use a flat shader brush. This is the Refer number two brush, which is in their core collection, which by the way, in October, the whole core collection from Refer will be going on sale for like 50% off. So something to keep in mind. I'll have to post a link for that for you guys because there is a sign up link, but I'm just putting it on the outer half of my eyelid. With my finger, I'm taking cherries. So the reason why I applied a base color first before applying cherries on top is because I found this color to not have as much of an impact as I wanted it to have. It almost has more of like a topper level of pigmentation. It does need a base layer and I was hoping it would be a little bit more of a thicker consistency that would pack a bigger punch on the eyelid with a little bit more dimension. It's very soft and pretty, don't get me wrong, but I just expected something else. This shade is just not quite as over the top as I was hoping for it to be. Now speaking of over top though, get a load of this. This is the shade Decadent, and she 
is decadent, you guys. I think that this shade is stunning. This is what I wanted cherries to be and more, and I'm just applying that all over the inner third of my eyelid, so you can do a soft layer like this. Or I really built it up. I really loved the dimension that this shade gave, and you can put this on top of shadows, whatever base color you want, but ugh. My gosh, everything about this eyeshadow. You guys see that? It looks wet. It looks like diamonds on your eyelid. This shadow is a 10 out of 10, you guys. So that's all I have for the shadow. I'll finish liner and lashes and all the good stuff. So overall, as you can see, I had a very positive experience with this palette. I'm so very impressed with this glitter shade, with the satin shade, how all of the mattes blended. And overall, I think you are getting a luxury palette with the exception of this shade. I also feel like this, as far as the depth of this palette, I actually think that this palette is gonna work for a large range of skin tones and it's a really fun fall palette. So while the color story maybe isn't the most original, if you do really like the packaging of the palette and the color story and you feel like this is a color story that you would actually wear, I do recommend this palette. I think Marc Jacobs palettes and the his quality is very, very nice. If, you know, you're not maybe taken by this color story or you don't find yourself reaching for colors like this, I do think this is a palette that you can pass on and it's not anything really revolutionary color story wise, but it's very nice. I'm very happy that I have it and I'm definitely going to be looking into more products from this collection. So that is all I have for today's review. I hope you guys enjoyed enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!